Hi church, welcome to our online church experience. We're so glad you're here. The service is about to kick off, but before we do, I'm just popping into your screens to give you some quick tips on how to best navigate your experience. If you're joining us on a laptop today, to the right of your screen, you will see a live chat room where everyone who is watching online can pop in and say hello. So why don't you pop in, say hello. You've just got to put in a quick nickname so we know who you are, but jump on and say hi to everyone. Down the bottom right corner of the video screen, you will see a button that says live prayer. If you click on this, you will be taken into a private one-on-one -on -one chat room with one of our team ready to pray with you. If you are new here or visiting for the first time, we would love to say hello to you. So jump up to the top panel on your screen, click on new here, fill out the form and one of our team will be in contact with you shortly. To participate in giving during our online service, you can jump up to the menu at the top of your screen, click on giving, and that will take you to our online giving options so you can participate during the service. Hey kids, to access your online kids program, jump up to the menu at the top of your screen, click on kids, and you will find what our amazing Kids Church team have prepared for you, which is actually accessible 24 seven. So anytime during the week, jump up, click kids, and you will find your online service. If you would like to connect with us further or let us know that your details have changed, jump up to the top menu, click connect with us, Fill out the form and one of our team will be in contact with you shortly. If you are joining us on a mobile today, you will notice that under our online service is the live chat room, which you can feel free to participate in. If you click on the live prayer button under the online service on your screen, you'll be taken to a one-on-one -on -one private chat room with one of our team who is ready to pray with you. This will automatically open on your screen, but to simply navigate back to the online chat room with everyone who is watching from the service under the online stream, just click chat and you'll be back. If you are new here, would like to find your online giving options or find the kids program or simply connect with us further, just jump up to the top left of your screen, click on the three bars and you will find those options ready for you. Thanks so much for joining in on my brief tour on how to navigate the online church experience. It's about to begin, so quickly go grab a tea, find a comfy spot on the couch and enjoy the service.
Good morning, C3 Burwood. Welcome to Good Friday. Um, it's very good to reflect on this day, what Jesus has done for us. Um, this is one of the day that um, that's look into your heart and um, allow the Holy Spirit to encourage you of what, what that means to you. Um, today is such a special day because this is victory for the humankind as God has sent his son. So um, sit back, relax, reflect, give God the glory and um, enjoy the message.
He came from heaven's throne Embrace a crown of thorns Our Savior and our King The sinner's friend Clothed in flesh and bone Redemption in His blood New life those who His veins poured out for us We sing what is the Lamb Worthy to be praised I lifted up Jesus raised There's freedom in His sky And healing in His wounds Oh, death, where is your sting? Our Savior lives Oh, we sing Worthy is the Lamb Worthy to What other king would take off his crown? What other king would give up his throne? What other king would hang on a cross and lay down his life for love? What other king has risen from death? What other king? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, 
but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you. Even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot. And like a root out of dry ground, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he has poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. A lot has been said about Jesus on the cross over the centuries. A lot has been talked about. Uh, people have written books. People have listened to sermons, written stories. Both believers and unbelievers, the story of Jesus on the cross has been talked about ever since the day it happened. Everyone's got a different opinion and a different angle. And I think, I believe, and I hope that for centuries from now on, of course, if Jesus doesn't return again, I certainly hope that we will continue to talking about Jesus on the cross. But today, on this Good Friday, I don't want to talk about what everybody else has said about Jesus on the cross and not even what I say about Jesus on the cross. Today, I want to talk about what Jesus said from the cross, what his words say. Jesus hung there in pain, under torment, and he spoke. And so today, I want to call this Good Friday Reflection the seven red letters from the cross. But first, let's set the context. You see, at this point, Jesus had already been arrested. 
Jesus had already been accused. Jesus had already been beaten and whipped. Jesus had already been dressed in robes and a crown of thorns forced over his head. Jesus had already been mocked by the soldiers. Jesus had already been led up to Golgotha, collapsing under the strain of carrying that cross. Jesus had already had the nails hammered into his hands. Jesus had already been lifted up off the ground and the cross falling into the hole made for it. And you can imagine the jolt and the pain. Two other criminals, one to his left and one to his right, crucified beside him in excruciating pain. Onlookers shouting and mocking, hearing the women crying, even children, even his own mother mourning with wails and tears. And there hanging from a tree, Jesus speaks. He speaks not just one time, but rather he was saying over and again, as if drawing to a conclusion all that he had said and all that he had done in his life. The very first thing we see Jesus saying is from the book of Luke, chapter 23, in verse 34. Jesus said, and I just want you to catch there, the tense there really should be Jesus was saying. It's as if he was saying it over and again. And here's what he was saying, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. As the nails went down in his hand, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them as they lifted him up. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. My son, Joe, he was about two years old and we, we, we had some cousins and relatives over for a fun time. All the adults were in one room and all the kids gravitated to another. And they were playing games and we could hear the squeals of laughter and joy. They were all young. Probably the oldest would have been about nine or ten and the, re the youngest would have been probably Joe at the age of two. But they were having all kinds of fun making up their own games in the other room. And so we, as parents, were really happy that they were having a good time and we could have our cup of tea in quiet. Well, surely enough, like every other child gathering, as they started to build and escalate into fun, the loud squeals got louder, the giggles got louder, the noises got noisier, until finally, boom, cry. It always happens, doesn't it? When kids get together, somebody hurts themselves. And usually it's the smallest. And this was just like that. I heard the boom and then the crowd, uh, sorry, and then the cry of my little boy Joe crying. And oh, you know, he's only two years old. So at that point I thought, no, I'm not going to be tough love dad. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to make sure he's okay. So I got up from my seat and I w wandered over. Well, I probably did more than wander. I got myself into that room real quick to the sound of my little boy crying. And when I looked into that room, I saw my son on the floor in tears, crying, crying, crying. And there standing above him was uh, his cousin, his older cousin, who was much stronger than him. And, and I looked and I went, <gasps> something in my head, I just clicked protect my son protect my son and so I've lifted my voice and I've said to that young cousin he was probably about eight or nine at the time I've said to him we don't do that sort of thing in our house we are not a we're not a violent people if, if he did something to you we don't do you know and I sort of went off at him and oh, I feel terrible about it I didn't really shout but I really got upset at this um this cousin of mine and uh, sorry cousin of Joe's and and oh man but then all the other cousins got around and said, no, 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 he didn't do anything. He's trying to help. Oh, and did I feel terrible. At that moment, I realized I didn't know what I was doing. I'd, I'd accused him. I'd crucified my little cousin, my little nephew. And I'd started ripping into him to make him feel terrible for hurting my little boy. And reality is he was trying to help. I felt horrible and from that moment onwards I've, I've had such a soft spot for that little nephew and I, you know, if you're listening out there nephew, I'm so sorry for that moment. Jesus' first words on the cross, forgive them father because they don't know what they are doing. 
Not just the soldiers who nailed his hands and his feet. Not just the onlook onlookers who, who mocked. Not just the accusers. But us. Even us so many years later. Jesus suffering and dying. And he keeps saying today, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Oh, forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. There were two criminals, one to the left and one to the right. Um, and one of them began to join the mockers. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and save us too. And he started abusing and shouting at Jesus. Whereas the other of the two criminals, the one on his other side, said, Hey, we got what we deserved. We did wrong. We committed crimes and this is the punishment for what we did. But this man, this man between us, he did nothing to deserve death. And then he turned his eyes toward Jesus and he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. And here's where we find Jesus' second words that we see on the scripture, his second red letter. Luke 23, verse 43, I assure you, truly, it's without a doubt, today you'll be with me in paradise. And when I read that, this gives me such hope. It gives all of us such hope. In fact, it gives the whole world such hope. Why? Because it tells me that we're never too late to turn to Jesus. Jesus didn't say to this criminal, remember you, a criminal, you never lived a life worthy of me. What do, what do you have to do with me? And here's where I draw hope. Jesus didn't ask the criminal to be perfect before he invited him. Nor did he say, when I see evidence of change, then I'll forgive you. No, I'm so glad that he said so much more. The invita invitation to paradise for this criminal came simply because he saw Jesus. He saw there on the cross the king who would come into his kingdom someday and he believed. And that's all you and I need to do. And that's why I've got such hope for everybody in the world. And then Jesus turns and he sees his mother and he sees John standing by. And this is what he says to, 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 to Mary in John 19. Woman, here is your son, and, she points to, and he points to John. And then he looks to John and said, John, here is your mother. Even on the cross, Jesus is concerned for his people. I love how specific Jesus' concern is. Mary would have a whole deep, deep hole in her heart at the loss of her son, her firstborn son. 33 year old you shouldn't die before your child we all feel this great yearning and desire mary would have a hole in her heart john was a young man without guidance he'd been following jesus these past three years and some people believe that G john was just a mere teenager at the time he'd be looking for guidance he'd be looking for someone older to help him in life so jesus says to the one that hole in your heart, let John fill it. And he says to, that, to the other, John, that need for somebody older, look to, look to my mother, she's becoming yours. Jesus says to us from the cross, here is your mother, here is your father, here is your brother, here is your sister, here is your son, here is your daughter, here is your friend. In this life, you and I, we are going to have struggles, pains, trials. But this command Jesus gives us, that we love one another as he has loved us. Jesus is still making that command and that call from the cross. Be mothers for each other. Be sons for each other. Jesus was on the cross six hours before he died. Could you imagine six hours of torment, six hours of enduring the suffering pain, six hours of listening to the mockers as he hung there, 
Six hours of watching people walk away one by one, abandoning him. Somewhere toward the end, maybe after more minutes and more moments, both Matthew and Mark's gospel, they recall the primal cry of Jesus. Nearing his last breath, he cries out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. And that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now that cry of Jesus has been read in many ways through history. And maybe if you've grown up from the church, you, you might have heard these, some of these. Jesus, maybe it was Jesus felt like God had abandoned him. So he's saying, why have you abandoned me, God? Other people have come with ideas that perhaps that's when Jesus took on all the sin of the world. And so God couldn't look on sin, so he turned his back on Jesus. And so at that moment, Jesus cries, why have you abandoned me? But today I'd like to say, I think Jesus, yes in anguish and yes in pain, was recalling something stronger and something deeper. Something well known to all the hearers. And something we miss because we're not first century Jews. Now here's what I mean. If I was to start singing something like this. Australians, oh let us rejoice. That's right. You know what to sing next, don't you? Or if I was to say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your that's right. You'd know what came next. Today I'd like to say I think Jesus was, yes, in pain and in, gang in anguish, but he was recalling something deeper, something stronger than his own pain. He was recalling, recalling something that all of those first century Jews would have been able to answer. He was saying the first line and he was listening for them to sing the next. Because I believe, and you'll see it's really obvious, he was quoting Psalm 22. Now I would love it if we had time to go ahead and read that psalm. And I would encourage you, go ahead and read that psalm after we finish here today. But I'm going to read you how it finishes. I'm going to read from verse 27. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations will bow down before you, for kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules the nations. All who prosper on earth will eat and bow down. All those who go down to the dust will kneel before him, even the one who cannot preserve his own life. Their descendants will serve him. The next generation will be told about the Lord. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people yet to be born. They will declare what he has done. I don't think this is a cry of someone abandoned and alone. I think rather this was a cry that, yes, I'm suffering now. I'm surrounded by enemies now. And it looks like God has forsaken me. But all you hear is... Remember what comes next. You remember what comes after that. That's right. The ends of the earth will remember this. The ends of the earth will turn to the Lord after this. All the families of the nations will bow down to the Lord after this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is just the beginning. And when he recognized that, indeed, the work he was sent was done it was complete. We read John moves on to the next of the red letters. And here is where it gets really intimate. And here where it gets fragile. Jesus has announced that what he came to do is done. And now he says in verse 28 of, of chapter 19 of John, I'm thirsty. Now I think this more than anything else that we read in the scriptures reveals the humanity of Jesus. How human is that? Needing a drink because he was thirsty. Recently I lay awake one night and I was just tossing and turning and my mouth had that feeling. You know that feeling like you, you just need to, just a mouthful of water or a 
couple of a glass of water and then that feeling will go away and you'll feel at peace but I tossed and I turned refusing going no I'm tired I want to sleep an hour went by refusing to get up no I just want to fall asleep I don't want to get up oh, but that feeling just wouldn't go away it would only get worse and of course this is a silly example but when I got up out of bed I went around I got a mouthful of water I came back to bed and within moments I'd fallen asleep you know that feeling when we get thirsty? Jesus knows our condition. He knows our weakness. He knows our needs because he felt those very same weaknesses. He felt those very same needs that you and I feel. He shared our condi condition and surely this is a comfort to us. He knows what we go through in life because he's been through it too. He was thirsty. And then... Shortly after, he uttered these final words from the cross. We're almost there. This is the sixth letter from the cross. There is one after this. And on John chapter 19, verse 30, it says, It is finished. Everything that the Father had sent him to do, he'd given his life, appealing for the forgiveness of even his tormentors. He'd shown the way to paradise, not, be, not by living a perfect life, but by believing in him. He'd organized his people who live on to be family to each other. He'd pointed to his own suffering as a sign for the whole world to be saved. And he'd shown that he was human, just like us, and that he knows our struggles. Look at this, Philippians chapter 2, verse 6. Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of men. And when he had come as a man in his external form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross and finally the very last breath Jesus says his final red letter from the cross in Luke 23 verse 48 father into your hands I entrust my spirit father my work here is done I can do no more for the world I need to trust you for what comes next I'd like us to take this moment on Good Friday to remember the red letters from the cross, the words he spoke as he gave his life. Forgive them and forgive them and forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Today you will be with me in paradise. Here is your son. Here is your mother. My God. My God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst. It is finished. And into your hands I trust my spirit. We're going to share communion together now as a church. Uh, I hope you've got your uh, juice and your bread ready. Um, in our own homes doing this together it's quite an odd experience to share communion when we're not even sharing it with other people but just imagine yourself on the uh in the room with everybody else that's on here online here with you um, i thought a great way for us to uh, reflect on jesus uh, sacrifice on the cross um, here on good friday would be to retell the story of that moment that really emotionally charged moment um, the night uh, he was betrayed um, when he shared the last communion with his disciples. And Annalise is going to read that for us today. So um, I'll hand over to Annalise. When the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. Then he said to them, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, 
gave thanks, broke it, gave it to them, and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And so as we um, sing this song uh, with you, I encourage you to take your bread and take your juice. God bless you as you do that. Jesus, today we thank you for what you did on the cross. We thank you for the life you gave for us. Today, on this moment, Good Friday 2020, God, we remember 2,000 years ago what you did is still such a beautiful thing for us today. We fix our attention on you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.